we're gonna record this uh, Zoom conference. We're gonna publish it uh, after. So uh, I hope a lot of people will use this information which we're gonna talk about. Today, we are talking about how to recover escape from business after the COVID pandemic crisis. Um, it's about time, I guess, because the spring is coming uh, for some countries as Switzerland, I guess it already came. Uh, yes, but in Russia, it's also plus two. So uh, we are not that jealous. Um, we invited a number of experts of the industry to share this useful information. And uh, we're gonna discuss very important steps with all of you. Uh, as I already told you, we don't want to make this Zoom conference longer than two hours. So each speaker will have five minutes. Um, Daria uh, will help me to organize the speeches. So uh, I also prepared uh, questionnaires over here. So let me try it. So right now you can see the question. You can press yes, no, or open with restrictions. Uh, again, it's, it's experiment. So let's see how it works. Uh, so uh, the first topic I want to speak is about the situation on the market during 2020. Uh, which questions we're going to discuss? How was your lockdown? Which measures have you done? So maybe you launched some new uh, escape rooms or maybe some new formats. And also the question is any help from government to business? So did your government help you or not? Um, okay, thank you for your answers. Um, now, please, uh, wait a second. Now, please tell me who wants to speak first. Please raise a hand. There is an option in, in Zoom who will speak first. So guys, anyone? Come on, don't be don't be shy. Uh, Lera, do you want to speak first? No, you don't. I, I knew you would pick me, so I was just waiting. So, what do you want to know? So, our questions. Uh, our questions: How was your lockdown? Which measures have you done? And any help from government? Cool, Five minutes. So yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Val and we're based in Switzerland. So we have to close as most of the countries in March, 2020. And we were allowed to open again in the beginning of June, 6th of June was it. Uh, summer 2020 was actually not as bad as we expected because people had hunger for the games and we had a lot of customers, a lot more than the usual summer. Um, and we work since 2015, so we do have some statistics that we can pull off. We had to restrict um, to five people in the team as of October and also people had to wear masks and this brought a big drop in amount of people that came to play as of October. And they locked the whole country in different phases during the month of December. So we had to close in the beginning of December, whereas escape rooms in some other cities within Switzerland could still stay open for a couple of weeks. And since then we're closed. Yeah. Uh, no clue. Dara, please tell okay. me where you're located, which city, because not everyone knows you. Yeah, of course. So we're in Switzerland, as I told. Um, we have escape rooms in Lucerne, um, which is the very small, beautiful city in the middle of the country, <laughs> if that helps. Um, I can also tell you about the restrictions in other cities in Zurich, because we're uh, in Switzerland, because we're very well connected with other escape room owners and managers, but it's similar everywhere. As for the governmental help, um, in March 2020, every escape room company could grab a credit that we need to pay out back um, starting in 2023. So for two years, they gave it without the payback need. Um, and then as of 2023, it will start to be bad and difficult. And we could take up to 10% of the turnover that we had in 2019. Uh, those went great, those went fine, but of course um, the money was gone very fast because we had to maintain all the uh, rent costs and all the other costs. Um, as of January, they're promising us to give us money for us being closed for four months now. 
we have filed in January and still don't have any money on the account or any understanding whether we will get any and if yes, how much and when. However, in other cities within Switzerland, I know that some people got the money already. And uh, what is very weird that in different cities, the amount of money people got is very different. So in one city, it was four times all the fixed costs um, for the months. And for other cities, it was just a small amount of money that couldn't even cover two times rent costs. So yes, this is how we live. And what we do, we run online um, shows we have not only escape rooms, but also shows with actors, and we created an online format, and this is something that we're running successfully since, since we're not allowed to open. And yeah, this is how it is. I hope that's understandable, and if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Yes, guys, if you have questions, you're welcome to post them on our chat. Uh, so this way we can read them and answer them. Uh, so, thank you, Lera, for your comments. Very useful, uh, very interesting. So, uh, Vladimir, uh, are you ready to tell about Russian uh, market and Russian situation? Uh, Vladimir is representing claustrophobia yeah, well. chain. So, uh, do you want me to repeat the questions so you remember them? So, the question uh, is, how was your... Yeah, well, I, I remember them again. Okay. How was your lockdown? Which measures have you done? And any help from government? Uh, five minutes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like uh, we are claustrophobia based in uh, Moscow. I am head of uh, R&D department. So uh, during the lockdown, we didn't receive any uh, help from the government actually. And uh, even more, uh, some of uh, our uh, guys which we rented uh, our spaces, uh, they were actually quite aggressive, uh, so they didn't lower the costs, uh, but, you know, we uh, survived. Uh, so uh, the main uh, idea of how we actually survived was uh, building online escape rooms. So uh, we uh, built quite an expertise in uh, this field. So uh, from the beginning, we started to brainstorm and uh, understand uh, what actually do we have as a chain except for the escape room so of course we have like locations and we have quite good stuff uh who also uh, became unemployed for the coronavirus that during, for, for the pandemic and we uh managed to capitalize that uh, resources so uh, we created some uh audio uh, experiences for the people to be uh inside some stories and uh, you know to interact with actors and have some fun this way we created uh some big uh, games for great companies uh, which they could play some kind of mafia or other board dish style game and also we managed to uh, pull out the avatar and the avatars were like the best experience because uh, we managed to make not only the uh, our escape rooms go online but also create new uh, experiences for the marketing uh, for the marketing of other companies for example we built a case for bandai namka uh, these are the, game, uh, the guys who create uh, games uh, in, uh, you know, uh, just games for PC and uh, platforms. So they had uh, this uh, game, uh, which was called like uh, the Dark Pictures Little Hope. It's, uh, an, uh, it's an interactive movie, uh, a game movie, where you decide where your, uh, your character goes and uh, however he dies or something. So uh, they have uh, this new chapter and they uh, came to approach us and say, we'd like to have an uh, online escape room uh, themed with this idea. And so uh, we uh, created a, a new genre of uh, such entertainment. Uh, it was called like uh, online uh, immersive movie. And uh, so we had some influencers and bloggers, which we gave some digest roles and uh, put them inside the game. So uh, they had a, uh, some mechanics to, uh, to make decisions for the players and uh, they had uh, great consequences and so uh, this project was quite a success uh, and so uh, we still have uh, uh, a lot of uh, requests from uh, other marketing agencies and we even uh, won a, a prize for best uh, online uh, client activation uh, on uh, one of our uh, no, as one of our awards uh, yes it was uh, one of the awards for uh, yeah, well, uh, I can definitely share some links. I, I think Alice uh, can do it. She's also uh, here. Uh, so that's actually how uh, our pandemic was going. And now um, 
like it wasn't really that bad because uh, we had some new pers perspectives uh, for, uh, for for the online experiences and uh, like we have a lot of resources the locations which are uh, quite well decorated and uh, we have a lot of stuff who can go there and play and so uh, we're building some strategies to even widen uh, this uh, activity uh, for marketing tools for some uh, for the entertainment and uh, so on so yeah uh, i guess uh, I don't know if you have like uh, uh, the third. Uh, I forgot like the first uh, question. How are the regulations uh, in our escape rooms in Russia? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it's not like a big problem. Uh, we are allowed to, to uh, put uh, like uh, teams with up to five uh, people. No problem. Uh, we also uh, have to, of course, sanitize uh, everything and uh, give them like masks and what? Uh -huh masks and uh, gloves and, uh, and, and stuff. Uh, so uh, we do it. And uh, I mean, uh, so far, no problem with the uh, government and uh, our escape rooms uh, offline are working quite well as well. Thank you so yeah, much. I, I guess uh, that's pretty much. Thank you, mm -hmm. Vladimir. Um, um, so you shared the link, I guess, Alisa Boulder shared. So this is the product online product, I guess, which you announced. But as far as I know, you have a lot of different online games. So you can visit Claustrophobia website and check for online games. They have English version. And this chain, as you know, is one of the biggest or maybe the biggest in Russia. And they introduce a lot of online uh, games and online uh, experiences. Uh, in 2020 and i know a lot of foreign uh, companies and foreign um, uh, groups played their games and loved them a lot of references you can find online so very good claustrophobia very good uh, i will ask akash um, to talk uh, and to introduce himself i hope his mic is working akash are you ready yes do you guys hear me Yes, we can hear you. Do you want me to repeat the questions? Uh, no, I think I know what to say. Okay, thank you. Five First minutes. Of all, I want to thank you for the experience, Vladimir, because I went to Moscow with my brother last year, I think, and we tried your Houdini room and we tried your Ghostbuster rooms. And uh, these two rooms, by far, my favorite escape rooms ever. So thank you for that and congrats. Thank you uh yeah so basically we are we are running a, a franchise chain called panic room but most of our locations are in, located in the us and right now i'm gonna talk about those uh venues um it's very hard to say how things are going in the us because we are talking about 50 states and uh none of them has the same re none of them have the same regulation and uh and uh, it's quite complicated even for us to understand what's allowed in one state and what's not. Uh, basically, our last year was terrible. Uh, I would say in average, we lost at least 80% of our revenue uh, in the venues in, in the US, uh, especially in California. That was the biggest hit for us. We have the most locations there and California was pretty much locked down for the entire year and it's still locked down. Uh, they are just trying to bring it back. Uh, our strategy was very simple. Because originally, we are from Europe, and we were two, four weeks ahead of uh, of the U.S. situation. So we already know and saw what's going to happen. And I, I tried to contact all the landlords pretty early. Uh, they were kind of laughing at us. Why, why, why are we saying that there's a pandemic? Because uh, you, you probably know how U.S. people are. They don't really care about what's going on in the world until they see <laughs> actually what they feel uh, on their own skin. So uh, it took a while until they took seriously what we were trying to predict and tell them. Uh, we pretty much fired everyone right before the first days of lockdown. So I fired like 50 people, which obviously was a hard uh, emotional stuff for me, but that was like uh, the only way how we could survive. Um, uh, the biggest issue was negotiating with the landlords. Uh, they are the, they are very very strict capitalists, and uh, they don't really uh, so they, they didn't really see uh, the work of the eco chain. That if uh, like 
I'm a tenant and if I cannot pay, I cannot be the only person in the entire chain who's going to pay the entire loss of the of the uh, uh, crisis. Uh, so that's still a very tough thing to make them understand that it's going to be more expensive for them to kick us out than to keep us in the uh, building. Uh, but honestly, this is why I, we feel and we, we uh, estimate that at least 50 percent of U.S. Uh, locations will close down. The reason is pretty simple because most of the locations uh, popped up in 2015, 2016, and most of them signed a five-year lease. And honestly, when the crisis hit, most of them didn't renew the lease. So that's why we estimate that the, the consolidation of the market and, and what we already uh, wanted to see uh, that the majority of small uh, mom and pop stores gonna shut down uh, that's, that eventually will happen after COVID. And uh, some words about uh, government help. In the US, the government did help. Uh, they, th there was a program called PPP. It's a Paycheck Protection Program. It was, it was a pretty stupid way how you wanna have businesses, but basically they wanted to keep your employees uh, on payroll while you couldn't operate, so it was on one hand, like a nice try. On the other hand, in an escape room, you don't have people with special knowledge. So it doesn't make sense to keep uh, someone on payroll. It's not like a restaurant where the chef is very important. So uh, we still got, I would say we got a lot of money in PPP, uh, obviously in different uh, LLCs. And uh, it helped us a little, maybe it helped us to finance two, three months of loss, uh, but at least it's something. Uh, most of this money can be forgivable and you can keep it forever and you don't have to pay it back uh, if you uh, meet certain, uh, certain, certain conditions. And uh, yeah, basically this is what I wanted to tell you in the first round. Uh, thank you, Akash. It was a pleasure to listen to you. So guys, for you to understand, Akash is an owner of a panic room franchise which is one of the biggest and i hope will be the biggest uh, franchise in the world uh, pretty soon uh, so you have to fight with Dmitry. <laughs> okay guys uh, so uh who wants to talk next uh we are waiting for a couple of experts from uh, canada because it's early morning, so they're joining us today. Uh, Matteo, if you want, you can tell us about Italian uh, experience, how things are going in Italy. I know that there are already three waves of lockdowns. So uh, the questions are following. Uh, how was lockdown in Italy? If maybe you don't need to speak about uh, each, each wave, tell us in, in general which measures companies have done and any help from government uh, yes hello everybody so um, it's funny well uh, at least and also to Arcos uh, that the situation is difficult to explain for us uh, uh, because they have many states and the same thing unfortunately is uh, it's difficult uh, to explain how the situation is in Italy because each region uh, have a different uh, situation in terms of lockdown, at least in the recent times. Uh, they divided Italy in uh, uh, three colors, well, yellow, orange and red, according to the amount of uh, uh, coronavirus cases so that the local government uh, uh, could uh, uh, deal with the situation in a different way. So, uh, well, yeah, the first lockdown, everybody knows, uh, unfortunately, it has been the hardest one because it was a complete full lockdown in, in Italy, the same. And um, summer was, a, how to say, a, a good time for escape rooms because they were able to, uh, to open and uh, to start working again, even though uh, many people uh, were scared and... Uh, um, the amount of bookings, the amount of people that actually participated, uh, that went out to escape rooms were really, really a few. Um, this is what, unfortunately, uh, the government did. It was a very heavy, uh, I would, would call it bombardment to like uh, 
to the people, saying, uh, scaring them uh, uh, not to go outside. Uh, going outside is dangerous. So that uh, this damaged a lot the, the idea of the escape room, uh, the idea of gathering together and uh, and participating in these kind of events. Um, then uh, we had a second lockdown after after summer, and uh, this was. Uh, um, a last, the last hit for many companies, many small companies, unfortunately closed, uh, um, and uh, they well, they did not uh, manage to survive. This connected with the question if the government actually helped the company in Italy. Um, how to say? We did not uh, receive almost uh, no help. If you count, uh, I've been talking also with. Uh, uh, some of uh, how to say some of the companies uh, and uh, some other companies and they received like a ridiculous amount of money uh, uh, like in a month they would receive like 3,500 euros uh, to cover somehow their expenses and well definitely in this chat everybody can understand that this kind of money cannot help at all a business is um, uh, it was like basically basically receiving nothing um what uh, what the companies did uh, to survive or trying to survive is as many uh, did uh, uh, was to start doing uh, lives uh, with um, uh, how they're called uh, um, avatar games so basically the owner of the company or the owner of the escape room would play for the gamers uh, while they were following uh, the live uh, uh, through a computer and uh, or just uh, simply uh, purchasing some uh, online games and then uh, selling it to their customers so basically this was the the only option and the most used option uh, through all the companies in italy and really many many companies did it did this and those ones who actually invest money in these kind of things try to survive they are actually with us today uh, those that who were too much scared to invest money because they were afraid of not surviving uh, the unfortunate times, unfortunately. Well, we have an example that today, unfortunately, they're closed. Um, we, um, we still uh, do not know when we're going to be out of the lockdown. Uh, it started a few days ago, like a week ago, approximately. And... Uh, uh, the government is saying that it's, it might be over the, um, the 6th of next month, but uh, it's, how to say, very unpredictable. This is one of the major problems of the market in Italy is that the, uh, the government has no uh, ability, on, uh, uh, ability to say what will happen. Uh, they are not able to guarantee exact dates to the companies, so nobody knows what will happen. They, uh, uh, many companies just opened recently and now they're closed again. So people cannot again visit the escape rooms and nobody knows when this uh, opening, closing, opening, closing will be in this situation will end. Uh, everybody is trying to do their best to um, um, provide a safety uh, environment to the players. So uh, disinfecting and uh, all the surfaces, uh, providing masks, gloves, uh, to play, uh, trying to reduce the number of people for each group, uh, maximum to four, if I don't make mistake. Um, but it seems that it's not enough for the government. And so right now, everybody is still closed. Thank uh, you, Theo. Yeah. <laughs> I know that if <laughs> you don't stop Italian guy, he will speak forever. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, guys, as far as I can see, Alexander from uh canada joined us but i'm not sure because uh, his, uh, his his avatar is missing so uh yes uh guys uh, let me introduce alexander he's from canada i hope he can hear me alex can you hear me speak with us please okay if not i have zoltan from uk over here Zoltan, are you here? Uh, okay, guys. Then we're going to switch to the next questions. But before that, what I wanted to tell you. 
uh, in Russia when escape rooms just started. It was 2013-2014. Uh, Vladimir also uh, can say if I'm wrong. Uh, there were so many escape rooms. There were around thousand of escape rooms in 2015 in Moscow, just in Moscow, imagine. And uh, at some point, there was a, some kind of a crisis in Russia and 80% of them were closed because they, was, they sucked, they were first generation, it was somewhere uh, in a stupid location. Uh, there were a lot of reasons why they were closed. And as far as I can say, now in US uh, in, and in Europe and in Canada as well, you can see something like this, what happened in Russia in 2015. Bad escape rooms don't survive, they just go bankrupt and they close this. But it doesn't matter then uh, that uh, the market itself is going to die or going to go bankrupt. Uh, we only see that it goes on the next level. Basically, we saw it in Russia. And now, again, it's just my thought that something like this is happening now that all uh, small escape from businesses are going to close and huge chains and really good escape rooms will survive because they're popular and people want this experience and uh, lockdowns will not stop people from uh, wanting to go to cinemas or wanting to go to escape rooms and so on and so forth. Zoli, you joined us. Okay, uh, Zoli, we are speaking uh, for five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to ask you several questions, which are, how was your lockdown in 2020? Which measures have you done to survive? And did you get any help from government? You have five minutes to speak about it. Then we're going to switch to uh, other speakers and other questions. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, tell us about your company and about yourself a little bit and answer these questions. Sorry, Troy, we can't hear yeah. you. Can, can you hear me now? OK. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Oh, it's disabled. That's OK. Um, so yeah, lockdown was pretty tough for us. Uh, in the beginning, we basically revamped the whole business. We had to let go half of the team. So that was a really difficult process, for sure. Um, and then basically, a couple of weeks into the lockdown, we've come up with a play at home game, which I guess pretty much everyone in the market did. Um, ours is a, a print at home game, which also has a posted version. So, you know, if you want to have it on nice paper and, and colored, then uh, we send that out. And we heavily relied on our uh, email list from the past, uh, which is about 60,000 emails. So, so far we sold almost 20,000. So that was basically a lifeline for us to pull us through the lockdown. Um, and pretty much that's what's been happening with, uh, with ClueQuest. Government was actually surprisingly a big help. Um, as me and my brothers are from Hungary, we didn't really give them a, a lot of, uh, we, we didn't think that we will get a lot of uh, help because you know, that's, just, that's just what we're used to. Um, but everything was very straightforward, very helpful. Like, you know, local council would send you money because you just uh, qualify for something and you don't have to fill in any paperwork. You just basically qualified and the money is in your bank account the next moment. So it was very helpful. The furlough scheme uh, took off a lot of load from our cash flow, um, looking after employee salaries. So that was a huge help as well. And yeah. I personally took a little step back from the company. So I'm more in an advisory role at the moment because I, before the lockdown, I was planning on a sabbatical, which then the, lo the whole pandemic happened. So I kind of stretched out um, my time with ClueQuest. And then I stepped back a little bit to, to an advisory role and to look after, to help them with marketing. Um, so it's currently, it's more of a part-time situation where I'm part-time uh, doing ClueQuest and I also created my own company, uh, a different uh, a different project called Zolitopia, which is basically trying to share all my knowledge from the past 15 years of being an entrepreneur 
um, and that's what be, I've been working at. Some of you might have even seen some of my posts in the in the escape room groups about this uh, reopening campaign series that I'm doing at the moment. So that's that's what we are up to. And I, I, did I cover everything? Um, I'm happy uh, to keep going. I just don't want to take up more time. Like, thank you, Zoli. We will have more questions to discuss. So I'll mute you for now. Uh, Alex, hi, Alexander, are you here? Or are we going to switch to next questions, guys? Uh, by the way, uh, there is a button below. Uh, and you can raise hands and do some kind of reaction. So if you want to speak first on next question, you're free to raise a hand. Again, it's ex experimental uh, Zoom conference right now. So we are implementing new stuff and experimenting with it. So what we're going to speak now, uh, we are going to speak about current situation. So basically when it was 2020, I thought after New Year's the situation will dramatically change, but it didn't happen as all of you know. And 2021 is not much better than 2020 for now. So let's talk about 2021, current situation in your country. Are you in lockdown, not in lockdown? What are restrictions right now? Uh, and current situation of the business. If you're open, uh, what changes you can feel? Uh, are there more people coming to play escape rooms or people are scared to play escape rooms? What do you feel right now at this moment? Uh, who wants to talk first? Please raise your hand. At least try to raise your hand. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, okay. If no no one wants... Do you want me to start again? <laughs> uh, yes. You're doing great, Lera. So please. Someone has to save the show, you know. <laughs> so can you repeat the question again, just so that it's fresh? So basically... Uh, it was, we spoke about 2020, now let's speak about 2020 now, uh, 2021, I'm sorry. So what is your current business situation? Are you open? If you're open, what do you feel? Uh, you have more visitors, less visitors, they're afraid to come to play escape rooms because they can get coronavirus. Tell us about current situation. So right now, uh, the whole Switzerland remains closed. There are only uh, two or three cities where you are allowed to run games for only kids who are up to 20 years old. And it's a very gray situation who to let to play and who not. So in our city in Lucerne, we're not allowed to operate 100%. So we're closed. Uh, we do still have people calling and asking, writing us emails, contacting us uh, over social media. So I feel that as soon as we will be allowed to open, we will have a lot of people coming because, uh, yeah, for the last almost half a year, people cannot do anything uh, for fun, uh, except museums are opened. That's something, but not as fun as playing escape rooms, of course. So we expect a very, a very good summer if we will be allowed to open or like at least a good time as soon as we are allowed to open. Uh, but then, of course, there will always be people who will be scared, um, especially with the fact that the vaccination in Switzerland is not as fast as everyone would love it to be. So I think there will still be a restrictions to play with a mask. And this will turn down some of the customers. But generally, we are we're happy um, trying to trying to keep it up, trying to keep the team motivated and looking forward to the time where we can operate. Who, who is whispering? Uh, I have my girls' home office next to me who are whispering. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lera. It was pretty useful and pretty fast. That's what we are targeting for. Um, so let's uh, listen to Vladimir. Oh, to Zoli, if you raise your hand this way. Okay, Vladimir, please. Oh, yeah, well, I can. So, uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, after the pandemic, uh, we uh, targeted uh, at uh, marketing uh, and uh, special uh, campaigns. So uh, now, like uh, after the pandemic, uh, it's uh, the restrictions are pretty much done, except for uh, the gloves and uh, masks uh, in Russia. 
So, uh, and people are actually not really afraid to go uh, into escape rooms because uh, like, you know, in Russia we have uh, that vaccine and all this stuff and uh, we have like uh, waves of uh, taking the vaccines and uh, everyone uh, feel pretty safe about it. And so now we're like, uh, it's uh, all melting and uh, a lot of our pre-production, which uh, we did during uh, the pandemic, like uh, our uh, production, uh, who did you know some uh, templates of the escape rooms? We're trying to put them uh, in uh, the shopping malls and all this stuff, and we are diving more into like location-based entertainment in general. Uh, so, like for marketing purposes uh, or like for museums and uh, general entertainment. So, like for uh, and also we have online. Like uh, for now, it's uh, all uh, seems pretty great, great. But uh, of course, we kind of like you know uh, like uh, the ability to go somewhere and. Uh, like see uh, ever, no, you know, other adventures in other countries. May I ask the question? But uh, we actually have like a small. Uh, yeah, well. Your connection is not uh -huh. really, really yeah, good. You can. That's why uh, half of the words are missing. So as far as I understood, now claustrophobia is investing in locations itself. Uh, so building uh, new experiences, museums, photo, uh, photo zones, as far as I, I can saw, you also did TikTok, uh, I don't know how to call it, not TikTok house, but they made a TikTok place where okay. people can come and uh, do pictures and uh, record TikTok uh, videos. How is yes. it going, by the way? Uh, it's going great. Uh, actually, we are also like like I said, uh, location-based entertainment in all the forms, uh, and uh, this is a uh, really a great way to uh, engage new audience, like the Generation Z audience. They uh, it's it's a huge like amount, and uh, for uh, weird uh, yeah, and it's an interest to like a new community for us. So uh, like the younger generation aren't uh, very fond of uh, the escape rooms. Like uh, our research tells us that uh, most of the people who uh, come to escape rooms nowadays, uh, to our escape rooms, are the people who uh, were invested in the escape rooms back in 2015 and 16. So they're pretty old now. And uh, so we're trying to uh, get into the Generation Z uh, by uh, merging the escape rooms, uh, all the locations we have, all the cool scenarios and decorations, uh, and uh, the TikTok and uh, all these activities. So we have a uh, department uh, which is responsible for uh, the TikTok and uh, that, you know, that community as well. Thank you, Vladimir. So in conclusion, uh, claustrophobia is trying a lot of new formats and they are trying to make locations which are filled not only with escape rooms, but also with the different varieties of uh, uh, entertainment. And that's really cool, really great. I hope you good luck with it. Because to be honest, uh, like uh, we are located in Moscow, and Moscow is the capital of uh, Russia, and we have a lot of stuff to do. But once you play several uh, entertainment which are in Moscow, you get bored of them and you want something different. And we're speaking about Moscow itself. So Moscow is stuffed with a lot of entertainment stuff, a lot of stuff in my words. Uh, so Alexander Karpov is joined us. Uh, he is an owner of uh, Canadian escape rooms. So I will ask you to answer both questions. The first and the second one, I will, I will repeat it to you. So we spoke about situation in 2020. How was the lockdown? Which measures have you done? As far as I know, you rebuilt some of your rooms. I'm sorry for spoiling. Uh, did you get any help from government? And now we're speaking about current situation in 2021. Are you open or you're still on lockdown? And what can you feel in case of players? Uh, do players come more often or do they, are they afraid to come to play escape rooms? Can you tell? us about it you have seven ten minutes thank you um thank you uh, alexander it would be my pleasure to tell about what's happening so we've been closed exactly a year ago uh since then we've been open for two three months between uh, several lockdowns we're very lucky in canada that um, we have a lot of support from the government and 
actually, let me first introduce myself. Uh, I just got a bit off, off guard. Um, I started Escape Game, uh, first Escape Game in Montreal six years ago. Since then, uh, we grow to six locations of Escape Games. We did the bar with Escape Game under. We built axe throwing place. I also opened uh, several uh, outside of um, Montreal in the capital Ottawa in Calgary. I tried to test uh, South American market where I failed, but it was a great adventure. Now um, I'm focusing more on uh, also offering different type of entertainment in Montreal, not just escape games. Right now we're finishing our escape game uh, bar restaurant where people would go to restaurant and they will be surrounded by different uh, puzzles. Not uh, like a board uh, game cafe, but actually puzzles. And through the whole uh, bar, uh, there is a big storyline. So you need to go uh, many times into this place to actually discover what's happened there. And uh, people can just uh, pay a small fee to, to try to solve these puzzles. So it's again, like an escape game, but we longer and in a not controlled environment. And there is no reset time. Um, so we're gonna test this and see how it goes. Um, the main reason why we've been doing a lot of things in the past year since uh, pandemic happened. Uh, in Canada, we're lucky that the uh, government helps us not only uh, with the rent or just um, loans, but also covers uh, some uh, uh, wages. So right now government pays 65% if you still hiring uh, someone, if you have people employed. And this has forced us to do things, to build things, to change our rooms. Um, that's the answer on the first question. As uh, um, what's happening right now? Yeah, we opened uh, last weekend uh, on Friday. We got fully booked for the first uh, three days on the weekends. It was incredible. We didn't expect that. People were mad that they were, weren't able to book some games. Uh, they asked why, what do you mean you have no place? Uh, however, it's uh, teams of two out of uh, 60 reservations during the weekend. I think we had only two or three where there used to be five people which of course uh, drastically changes on the income, uh, on sales, but still it's better than nothing. Uh, Alex, Alexander, are you charging per person or per team? We charging per person, but we have a flexible rate when the more you are, the cheaper it is. So the price starts from, uh, let's say $32 if you're two and goes uh, down to 25 if you're a team of six. Um, so that's what uh, uh, what happened for the past weekend. People were happy. I don't think there were a lot of people scared to come. I think everyone over uh, pandemic, they just really wanna go out and do something. Um, another few things we did during the pandemic, we start our own outdoor escape game. And this actually worked really well. And now we have a lot of people also asking to play. Uh, it's a mix of scavenger hunt uh, and how I call it with uh, escape game puzzles. Um, we did it based on the history of Montreal. Uh, now some museums are interested to purchase these games from us. They're hiring us to build these games for them. So from one experience of outdoor escape game, it actually everything moved to proper business model. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, uh, by the way, if you want to know, in Russia, before Escape Games appeared, uh, the format of scavenger hunt was very, very popular. Uh, we had, I don't know, 10 or 20 or maybe 30 companies who did this. I used to play it myself for five years, and then Escape Rooms appeared. Let's imagine how happy I was. Uh, so uh, let's proceed. Uh, Alex, you want to talk? Yeah, I want to ask the question: What happened with all the these companies in Russia? I know uh, uh, it was an Encounter. There was uh, uh, some other names. Uh, there were like it's, it was a big movement, and yeah, 
it disappeared when the escape game started. So what happened with them? And do you think there will be another boom of them right now? Uh, so uh, most of them are closed. I can tell you why. Uh, at least in Moscow, uh, the purpose of this game was to solve the puzzles, to come to certain locations and to search for the codes. And it was an actual race on the cars and you have to speed up, it was at night. So now uh, once in Moscow, there are a lot of speed cameras and, and police is getting much harder. Uh, I guess this is one of the reasons why they got closed because you're you are unable to, to race right now. And now we have escape rooms all over the places. So I guess uh, City Hunt, uh, transformed into escape rooms but right now because covid situation and i think they may come back but in a different format so you were you were saying that a lot of museums and a lot of uh, even uh, i don't know city uh, city councils are asking you to to do this game for them so that this is another uh, niche for this kind of games and we are also developing this kind of product as well uh, yeah, so I think they, they will come back in some different format for uh, fun education. You know, it's uh, you educate yourself, but in a fun way. So that's a good uh, implementation of such games. And I hope uh, they will come back to the market uh, soon. Okay, so uh, uh, Zoli, do you want to answer the questions? Do you want me to repeat them? So how 2021 began uh, uh, current situation in your country lockdown no lockdown what restrictions and if you're open tell us about uh, the feedback from the players turn on your mic so currently we're in lockdown the whole country is and I mean, the government did announce this like roadmap out of lockdown, which to be honest, like it does help a lot. We categorize all the businesses in the country, even escape rooms finally made it to the list um, because the first few iterations, they didn't include um, escape rooms on them. Probably the industry is not big enough yet uh, in the country. But anyway, we are now on the list and we are allowed to reopen on the 17th of May. Uh, the whole lockdown situation is supposed to end, I think it's the 30, 21st of June. And so they're like step-by-step -step, uh, easing on the lockdown. So pubs are reopening, garden, you know, you can, you can sit outside and have a drink, stuff like that. Um, so in terms of the escape room market, I, I genuinely think that people will, as Alexander experience it i think people will just rush to places and there will be like at least for a month or two there people will be crazy uh, to go out and meet their friends and there are actually a lot of uh, research suggesting that the households in the uk are sitting on an immense amount of savings because they were unable to spend on holidays or anything so i think people are ready to go out meet their friends and just like burn through some money to create new new experiences and i genuinely think that the first thing they will do is live experiences where you get together with your friends and loved ones and create new memories. So I think escape rooms are in a good place. And I also think while I was researching my reopening campaign planner, I went on like at least over a hundred escape room websites and mostly in the UK, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, I don't know, like a quarter of the industry is wiped out in the process which is very sad, um, but, you know, trying to, look on the trying to look on the bright side, in London, the market was saturated um, and we were struggling with bookings every now and then because there were just so many escape rooms. Within a 10 minute walk, we had another 12 companies. So I think it will actually help that, you know, there are less competition as unfortunate that is. So I'm not suggesting that it's a great thing. Um, but, but anyway, like it helps us. And so, yeah, I think people are ready to go out. What we've been doing is basically we revamped all our rooms. Um, 
or like well one of them got like a major facelift so you can't really recognize how it looked before um and all the other rooms are facelifted the mission control is has changed one of the big changes that we're introducing we used to have a one-to-one -one ratio for games and hosts um the new financial reality forces us to give up on this although it was a very tough decision but now we're going to have uh, a two two horse to three teams ratio so that's a big change for the company and the whole staff is being trained on this at the moment time slots are changing all that all that kind of stuff um and as for the reopening i think mostly we will focus on bringing back our existing audience for starters um because i think they're keen to return and so far our play at home game like proves that that we can sell things to them they really love our experiences so that's a good start and then we will start to uh, build into new audiences again um so Lee, can, yes can you tell us about your videos and what you have prepared for for the opening campaign like the hints which you introduced in uh, facebook sure groups. um so this new company that I'm doing, Zolitopia, is, is uh, basically I'm just trying to share my knowledge. So I created a course um, about how to reopen. And it's basically the exact same blueprint that we are going to use because I'm the one who will be managing our reopening campaign. So it's essentially a 40 minute video guide. Uh, so there's a free version and there's a paid version. The free version has 40 minutes of video guides uh, that covers everything from how to find your marketing message, how to segment your audience, how to put together your promotional offer, and then how to schedule and deliver it on the campaign. Just in a nutshell, obviously, goes into much more details. And then there is a paid version where uh, you get a lot of uh, pre-written things like newsletters, you have budget and target calculator, uh, basically an all-in-one planner that kind of guides you through the whole process and helps you to plan your own campaign and helps you to process your own data so then you can reach out to to people so so that's what we've been working at uh we, we will keep our play at home game as well because that's a new revenue stream and it's doing extremely well so we will just keep that and in terms of reopening a part of the company is working on the operational side so the team getting ready to reopen and getting back into the rhythm of actually having to welcome teams and all that because they just kind of are not used to that because they haven't been doing it for a year uh, while we were open for like two three months but when they came back they you know they made comments that wow i'm so tired and they worked i don't know like 100 hours in a month where they used to do 170 sometimes up to 200 so they're really not used to doing the work so that's that's the operational side of things and on the marketing side, uh, currently we are mostly processing the data. We have the 60,000 email addresses, which has a lot of data points about like when they did come, which products they tried before. And we will do like this massively personalized marketing where we try to, you know, if someone tried product A and B, we want to make sure that they land on product C in like the newsletter set talks about that product and they land on that page as well. Um, so yeah, kind of doing some big data stuff. So that's, that's what we've been working on. Thank, the thank you, Zoli. I, I hope it's fine. I call you Zoli because yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. uh, Akash, I know that uh, for you to answer these questions is much harder because you have a lot of locations in different uh, in different states and in different countries but maybe you can tell us some i don't know interesting aspects uh in some countries or in some states do you want me to repeat the questions no i think i basically want me to talk about the first part of the year uh the stores we reopened are doing pretty well actually so we can see the light at the end of the tunnel which is which is a good sign i also agree with the with the guys uh who talked uh, before me that that the market is uh like like we have a really good outlook and the reason is very simple because majority or not majority but but at least 50 percent of the stores actually in the us are gonna shut down 
and while the demand is 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 probably gonna grow because people are uh, they're closed and they are looking for experiences they had to like uh, uh, avoid for a year. Like uh, I, I really want to see how bars and and nightclubs are gonna do, for example, in Hungary, Budapest, uh, uh, where I'm from. Uh, I, I expect to see a lot of drunk people when when all the bars gonna reopen. So uh, I. Uh, I expect to, I I, I expect good, good numbers. Uh, for us, uh, 2020 was not the year of uh, of uh, inventing new stuff. At least not in the escape room industry. Like I, I know a lot of people d did these uh, online games and stuff like that, which I completely didn't believe in. Uh, this is a very interesting things with entrepreneurs that uh, we just don't like to see them watch the walls. Uh, why sometimes I believe it's better to do it because it, it takes a lot of time and money to develop a, a right product and uh, long term it's not going to help you to survive so you can make some money out of an online, online experience but it's never going to be as good as an online game that was actually developed for millions of dollars uh, to compete with them I, I, didn't, I didn't find it uh, as a reasonable move um, what else I wanted to say uh, yeah, and the other thing is, we uh, the good thing of COVID for us was that we could uh, we could focus on building our new venues. And this is pretty much interesting, uh, very interesting in the U.S. that uh, majority of the stores are completely illegal, and uh, this is pretty much true right now. That it's very hard to categorize escape rooms, and 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 this is partly the reason why in most states we don't even know can we be open or not because we are not properly uh, classified. And our stores are 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 fine, but there are many stores that are uh, located in industrial buildings. They don't have the proper certificate of occupancy. So this is kind of a uh, this is a very very interesting period uh, in escape rooms. That, for example, three or four years ago, for us it was like two hundred fifty thousand dollars to open a random. Uh, compact store with three themes. Right now, it's very hard to open a compact venue anywhere in the U.S. from under five hundred thousand dollars, and this is like basically the cost of market entry was raised was raised drastically in the past years, and this is partly because of uh, uh, the tragedy in Poland, and also partly because uh, uh, COVID nineteen. Our stores that are, we are actually building five stores right now. The biggest one is in Las Vegas. That has, like, like that process, COVID alone caused us at least $500,000 uh, extra cost just on that one store. And it has, I still don't know when it's going to be open, but uh, it is, it, it was supposed to be open by the end of last year or something like that. So, uh, very, very interesting times. But uh, again, I also see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, Akash. Uh, it's very cool that uh, for those who are reopened, you can see a lot of people coming and it gives us a light in the end of the tunnel that uh, after COVID ends or like restriction ends, we're gonna survive and we're gonna have as much players as it was before 2020. Uh, so guys, uh, who is going to be next? Matteo, maybe you can tell us uh, how reopening, I know there was several waves of reopening uh, in Italy, but uh, the most interesting part, basically what the owners felt after reopening, was there a lot of people coming and stuff like that. So. Let's speed up a little bit. So, um, yes, uh, up, well, during all the reopenings, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the amount of people that, uh, want, that wanted to, to go back to play, it was not enough. Uh, owners were happy uh, when, during the reopening, but uh, um, how to say, uh, the, the amount of people that went out to play, it was absolutely nothing compared to uh, before the COVID. 
Uh, this because un for the unfortunate, uh, uh, as I said before, bombardment from the government saying that the situation is dangerous, be careful going around. So um, the, all the social media and all the um, uh, TV channels and news uh, uh, did not help absolutely whatsoever to uh, uh, make the people more relaxed uh, while going around during the reopening. Uh, even uh, with all the effort of the of the comp of the escape room owners to try to make their uh, uh, buildings and their rooms uh, safe uh, and uh, and uh, how to say COVID uh, friendly, let's say uh, it did not help uh, really much. Of course, there was uh, an increasing uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, visitors, amount of clients coming over to the escape rooms that all the time has been uh, um, cut down uh, by the uh, by the re-lockdown uh, so yes it was uh, every time there is as as uh, for example also Akos said there is the light at the end of the tunnel every time that the government says okay now you can start working again everybody is very happy uh, there are many people that want to go out uh, but they are so not sure of what is going to be the future uh, that, uh, how to say, many are even are scared to, to even open, even if it is possible. I've heard, uh, I've talked with many companies that did not even open recently uh, in, the previous, uh, uh, in the previous months, just because they were scared of, okay, if I open, my expenses will go up again, and I will, uh, I don't know for how long time I'm going to stay open. Um, and in, in, uh, if we're talking about classifying uh, the, um, this kind of business, also in Italy, it is not a very big, uh, um, uh, how to say, big market uh, yet. It's not, rec not uh, recognized by the government yet in a very precise way. So many businesses could not open even during the reopening because they were uh, their license uh, was not mentioned in the list of, of, of businesses that could open. For example, uh, I know a couple of businesses uh, in North Italy. One it was in Bergamo, and uh, they were registered as a gym just because they had another business connected to their escape rooms, and so they could not open at all, even during the reopening. So also in here, different situation for different companies. Uh, uh, well... Uh, the regular, the how to say, the rules are not uh, equal for everybody. Uh, but if we look at the general situation, yes, uh, uh, hopefully the six of uh, next month uh, will uh, will be the last lockdown, uh, even with restriction. Let's cross fingers for that. Uh, even with restriction, definitely uh, the business is going to be to be better because people really want to play. Uh, thank you, Matteo. So, guys, uh, uh, let's now move to the last uh, step of our uh, Zoom conference. Um, I want you to share uh, the advices for those who are still not opened, or maybe some good ideas how to prepare for reopening. Uh, if you know, we, we have also prepared a webinar about it, so you can check it. Daria will post the link. Uh, on it, but if you also have a good, uh, how to say, a good advices for others, please share them. It will be very useful. Thank you for sharing, guys. So let's start with Valeria as always. Lera, are you ready? Yes. And, and the whisper. No whisper anymore. Girls are girls have completed their day. Okay. We're just not allowed to work in the office. That's why me and my managers will work. Alera, I accidentally turned you off. Yes, because the police officers are giving fines if we keep working in the offices. So we have to work from home all together, which doesn't change anything. But hey, uh, my advice, well, I don't really have advices how to start, but my biggest advice would be to stay optimistic and to hope for the best, because I know from a lot of escape room owners with whom I'm in contact with, they, they're they so tired of the whole situation that they don't even believe that ch things can change to better. So first of all, don't stop to hope and do your best. 
like spend the time you have now to improve the rooms, how some of you um, are doing or some of our listeners are doing. Um, make sure that you keep your team. I think this is the most important in how to start because what we don't want to achieve is when we are allowed to open that our game masters are not willing to work with us anymore. And, I, and this is my biggest, um, not concern, but my biggest point in which I'm spending hours and hours of time talking to all the employees that we have and making sure they're motivated and waiting for us to be back. And as for how to, how to start, well, it fully depends on how long you are guys opened, how many rooms do you have, and what can you provide to the market. So make sure that you segment your territory accordingly, that you know who your customers are, that you know what do your customers value, and focus on your key sale selling points. I'd say this should be the most important stuff. Uh, thank you, Lera. Thank you so much for your comments. I texted you on WhatsApp. <laughs> Uh, Vladimir, are you ready? So, yes. As, as the biggest chain in Russia, can you give others some advices? I know that in Russia, the situation is uh, totally different because Better, yeah. because we are not in lockdown for three or five months already. Everything is open. Mm -hmm. Clubs are open. Nightclubs are open too. You can party hard. And yeah, uh, well, but us. we still kind of went uh, through the phase uh, where uh, nothing was open and uh, we had to overcome it. But uh, I guess uh, that's uh, the main advice here should be that uh, you should uh, find like new perspectives uh, from your business and uh, understand which assets do you have and how to capitalize them, uh, even without uh, necessary creating, you know, escape rooms. Like, uh, we know that, uh, okay, we have escape rooms, we know how to bring people there, but it's still an audience. Uh, which can, uh, you know, enjoy uh, online uh, online escape rooms or online games. And uh, as we understood on uh, our experience, there is even a brighter audience outside the uh, escape rooms. Uh, and so, like, uh, they are up to some marketing abilities and uh, all the location-based entertainment stuff. And so I guess uh, that should be, like, the main uh, advice. So uh, find new perspectives and uh, be open to new ideas and... Uh, you, that's the way uh, you can make you know your business go in uh, different uh, even unexpected directions which can be profitable even at these hard times yeah i guess thank that's pretty you. much it thank you vladimir um akash can you share your ideas yeah uh R russians uh, russians are always different than other parts of the world, uh, you guys eat the virus and spit it out. It's not gonna be true in the Western part of the world, unfortunately. Uh, but the vaccination is a really good way to to come back to real life. And uh, first of all, I I think reopening will mostly depend depend on the amount of uh, debt uh, escape rooms and any other uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, put together during the COVID. So I, the, the biggest issue and what I see is that this is pretty much true for every business that uh, if you have a lot of debt, uh, you own a lot of money to the landlord and to the banks, you're not that motivated to restart a business. And uh, this is something that ha has to be uh, controlled by the government. And I think most, most of the smart governments and most of the smart landlords already see that, that uh, uh, if if an entire generation of small entrepreneurs go bankrupt, then nobody's gonna rent their properties and 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 nobody's gonna hire millions of people. Uh, in the U.S., for example, small business owners are the backbone of the of the economy, and they are very strictly hit by the by, by the pandemic. So uh, that's why they are trying desperate. The government is desperately trying to help them. Uh, I think renegotiating the lease with the landlords is a smart thing to do. Uh, not that many people want to lease anything in the world right now. Property prices should fall, uh, like should have fallen in most parts of the world. So I think there's some room where you can talk to them. Uh, I really like what Zoli said about decreasing the uh, the labor costs. Uh, it's a very like for example, Panic Room is doing it from day one. We couldn't afford having one game master running just one game. Uh, but obviously, the service quality is a lot better if just one person can 
uh, deal with an entire team for more than an hour. Uh, but maybe coming up with any kind of solution that helps you to decrease labor cost is a good idea. Uh, probably have to fire your managers and jump in as an owner or, or, uh, or, or having, for example, Panic Room has this kiosk system, which makes it easier to run games. Uh, you can, like one game master can do three to six games at one time, if he's well educated. Uh, and also, which is true for us, is uh, if you have the capital and if you have the energy and the motivation, I think it's a, tr it's a historical time to find uh, or look for uh, new locations. Uh, we secured a very big amount of funding from a Hungarian venture capital firm just just for investing in new corporate owned stores which is uh again since most of the malls are are losing tenants most of the street retailers are empty it's a very very uh great time to invest and and to expand and and uh and uh try to like beat your competition this way Thank you, Akash. Uh, what I heard, what was a little unexpected for me, but if you think about it, it's expected about the Game Masters that if you were closed for a year or for half a year, the Game Masters are not willing to come back to you. So it's how to say. But, yes. But I, I, I think, uh, and you might argue with me about this, but I don't think... Uh, like game masters are that essential in this industry. No, I it's, mean, it's like they about... can add to the experience, but if your room suck, they're not gonna not gonna make a difference. Uh, if they are, if if your rooms are good, they can obviously d d like destroy the experience. But uh, every business who relies on his employees too much is gonna fail long term for sure. So you have to work out systems, and. Uh, I, I, I totally agree, but we're talking about the hints for reopening. So if the Game Masters is something that is needed to run escape rooms, it's a good idea to think in front to, to get those or to educate them. But in, in just an example, in Hungary, there are 400,000 people working in the service industry. It's a country of 10 million people and uh, most of them lost their jobs so i don't think that's uh that's a that's that's going to be a problem to 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 find employees in our sector not to find them but to educate them to work better than it was before but uh, i totally agree with you as well it's not an essential stuff an essential uh, problem we are, we, we are not running a nuclear plant so i i think with your rooms alex like it's very easy to educate the game masters like like if a game master cannot learn how to run a game in a day or so he i in my personal opinion he's not gonna do well long term so it's not gonna be an, it's it shouldn't be an issue thank you uh zoli are you ready to share some advices with us from your paid part yeah absolutely um I think my, the, the main advice I would give is that there, there will be, when everything reopens, whenever the lockdown ends in wherever you are, there will be a finite amount of time where people will be crazy to go out. And if you, if you manage to ride the tide well and you like plan everything out properly, you ride the tide when people are going crazy just to be out, then I think you have like an awesome bounce back from this whole thing and you can, you know, keep riding the tide. Um, and it just comes down to finding the right message, how to talk to them, how, like what we are going to do, for example, is we, we're going to, we're going to ride the whole nostalgia train. So we are starting with our own audience. We will be like, come back. It's an amazing experience. We have all the team photos lined up to be sent out to them, to remind, remind them of their experience. And, once they're in, I think it's just really important that you show them the best time of their life. So then they go around and be like, this is exactly what I did when lockdown ended and generate all the social content for you. Just raving about how great it was to see their friends and family again, because that's all we will see on social media. And if you can find a way 
that they talk about you, your audience, then you will reach new audiences. So I think the gist for me is, is to, to do this, that you find a way to their hearts to, to ride the nostalgia train and bring them back. And once they're out, you, you have them like help them to rave about it. And just one, one more thing that I would advise everyone, just go back to your booking data and analyze the shit out of it. Because if you target your messaging properly, based on when people are coming, if they're friends and family group, if they're a family group with young kids, if they're a corporate, whatever they are. If you like target them with the right message, how to bring that back those original memories when they, when they came to you, I think they will come back. I think people are craving to revisit the places that they love. Like I know for sure that I do. I really want to go back to my local pub. I really want to go back to my local cinema, stuff like that. So I think and I'm not the ultimate customer, but I think that's where people's heads are at at the moment. And there will be just a finite amount of window to to ride this tide, just to repeat my clever analogy again. But I, that's that's what I would do. And yeah, train your staff to make sure that everyone has an amazing time, the best of their life. And the customers will do all the advertising for you with user generated content. That's what I think what you should do. Thank you, Zoli. Uh, Alexander, are you with us? Uh, so now we are speaking about some advices for those who are still closed or just reopening. From your perspective, you already opened for four days. It's 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 like a, a year in 2019. So can you share how is the best way to reopen? Maybe you have some insights or help or hints for others. Can you share them, please? So we also have a problem with staff. We used to be 44 game masters before pandemic. Uh, when we opened four days ago, we've been five people. So everyone left and some people left uh, the day or two days before the reopening. So this is something to, to be expected and uh, we've been prepared. I had uh, increased salary to um, all my top game masters just to make sure they stay. They also did some um, construction work, like not construction, the decoration work during the pandemic just to keep them busy and show that uh, there will be a place for them. I think that's my number one advice, try to, communicate with your game masters before, give them some small tasks, uh, meet once a month, clean the place or something, something to keep them occupied. Um, we opened four locations in one day and that was hell. I was running between all the locations because uh, no matter how good we prepared for reopening, there were still a lot of small things. Something, this didn't work, that didn't work. People, game masters didn't run games for several days, for several months. They forgot how to reset. They forgot a lot of things. Um, so just keep your key employees. That's probably my best advice. Uh, it's gonna be easy. And uh, I would recommend not to open, if you have several locations, uh, not to open all of them at once. Just open gradually. It's gonna save you a lot of, uh, um, a lot of time, a lot of energy. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, guys, anyone else want to share with us? Because to be honest, half of the people which <laughs> entered our Zoom conference, I don't know. So if you want to speak, please raise your hand or tell us. Or, te or text us in our chat, Alex. Uh, tell that we got like a little networking in our chat also and guys if you would love to ask any questions please feel free to text us here thank you so yes guys we are close to finish line so thank you all for participating it was a new unstandard format uh we should start it in 2020, I guess, because Zoom conferences were more, more popular that time. Still, thank you, everyone. Uh, this conference or this Zoom meeting were recorded, so we're going to publish it soon, if nobody minds a 
except Daria. I also I just wanted to ask if such a format of conference is comfortable for everyone or we have to we, we wanted to try Clubhouse or we better stick to Zoom. <laughs> Okay, Daria is forcing Clubhouse, but uh, I can tell you that Akash couldn't uh, join Clubhouse. He even installed the program which I sent him with the viruses, and now I have his whole contacts with me. Uh, it's a joke, but still. Uh, so, guys, uh, we can make a new Zoom conferences like this, and we're going to speak about different topics if you liked it. Uh, again, please comment if you liked it or not. Uh, again, thank you all for participating. Uh, we're gonna publish this Zoom conference soon. Yes, thank you everyone. If there are no questions anymore, we're gonna finish. Maybe someone want to add something, just feel free to unmute yourself and talk. <laughs> Okay, anti-terrorist uh, operation is still proceeding, as I can see. Uh, so for you to understand, it's it's very uh, serious. I'm sorry. Cannot, uh, they cannot. Okay, guys. Thank you, everyone, for participating. It was a pleasure. Goodbye. Thank you.